What we're going to be going through here is how deferred taxes should be reported on a corporation's balance sheet. That is, the, is the deferred tax uh, reported as a current asset here or liability or a non-current asset or liability. So this is how you have to approach these problems here. When you're talking about deferred taxes, you're going to have some temporary differences here between your book tax or your book a financial accounting and your tax accounting here. So lay it out. We're going to be looking at several temporary differences here. And then based on these temporary differences, you're going to have a resulting deferred tax either asset or a deferred tax liability. In the case of a deferred tax asset, that's where there are future deductible amounts here referred to as a DTA here. And then uh, for a deferred tax liability here, that's where you're going to have future taxable amounts, a deferred tax DTL here, a deferred tax liability. And what I'm showing here is everything in a hundred, a hundred, a thousandths of dollars. So the hundred here represents a hundred thousand dollars. So how do we get just to that number here, just so you understand what's going on here. Now, what you would do here is the t you take the temporary difference. In this case, it would be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars here, times a uh, forty the tax rate here, forty percent. That's going to give you a hundred thousand dollars worth of deferred tax liability. And we'll uh, just look at it in terms of that here, how we'd calculate that here. So, uh, next thing here, uh, based on this temporary difference you have to determine the related balance sheet account here. So whatever that temporary difference is, what does it relate back to here uh, for your balance sheet account in this case? Exactly, if it, is it a plant asset here or in case of some installment receivable, you have to uh, determine what the related balance sheet account would be for that temporary difference. And then based on the related balance sheet account here, you have to classify it. Is it either non-current or current here. So in the case of a plant asset, it would be non-current. It has uh, greater than a one year life here that we're looking at here. And in case of a current amount here, that would be the case where you're looking at it, it would be less than one year here that you're looking at. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at our example here and just say we have, uh, we won't go into all how we calculated it, just look at here for depreciation purposes here. Say you had excess tax depreciation or book depreciation. So uh, in the later years here, you're going to have a deferred tax liability for this depreciation because you had taken it for tax purposes in like the first year here, but uh, you're not going to be able to de take, deduct it in any future years here. So that'll be a deferred tax liability. Okay, so what does that depreciation relate to? Well, it relates to plant assets in this case. And plant assets have a greater than one year life here. So that would be non-current here. So we've classified our temporary difference for depreciation here. Now, uh, let's just say we had a lawsuit, some obligations that we have to pay on, some, on a lawsuit here. So uh, in this case, let's just say it's a deferred tax asset here. That is, we're going to be a future deductible amount here for tax purposes, and we won't get into that calculation. But uh, the related balance sheet account would just be a lawsuit obligation, and uh, it would be classified here as a current obligation or current liability here. That is, it would have to be paid or within or less than one year here. And then let's look here at some installment sales here. So let's just say uh, we're going to have whatever the sale was here, 24,000 of it here would be set up as a deferred tax liability here uh, for a portion of that installment sale here. And then the other portion here, the remaining amount of the installment sale would be a deferred tax liability of $126,000. So first off for the installment sale here, we'd have our related balance sheet account would be the installment receivable here. And let's just say you'd have to determine what that portion is here. And it's a current amount here because it's a receivable that would be less than one year here if we would be breaking this installment portion of the installment sale here that is current. And then let's just say the installment sale, the remaining portion here would again be an installment receivable, but it would be a non-current amount because it would be receivable here of greater than one year here, whatever this 126,000 would have to, it would be in future years here or a future period here, but it would have to be greater than one year here. Okay, so what we've done here is we've classified our temporary difference here, either non-current or current here. And we also, you'd have to determine what your deferred 
tax asset or liability would be. So we've, we've pre-done that here in this case. So what we want to be looking at here is how we'd be reporting that here. So this is just a very basic example. So what we're going to be looking at here, you could sum your totals up here and you're going to see that your deferred tax asset total amount would be 25,000 here and your deferred tax liability would be 250,000. But that isn't exactly the way you have to approach these problems. You can't just, you have to base it on either non-current or the current amount, not just the total aggregate amount here of a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. So let's go and let's look at how we uh, just real basic here. So for current assets, uh, we're going to have a deferred tax asset. That is, we have 25000 here, uh, current amount here. You, that's for that lawsuit obligation, a current amount here. Uh, it's going to be an asset here, 25000 And then we have to compare it to our other current amounts here. In this case, we have a current amount here of a deferred tax liability of 24000 for our installment sales. So what we want to do is we want to net those current amounts out here. And uh, because our deferred tax asset here, 25000 is greater than our deferred tax liability. We're going to, uh, greater amount here, it's going to be classified as a deferred, a deferred tax asset here. But it's going to be a current asset here because you can see here, uh, the lawsuit, we had a current amount here at $25,000 for the lawsuit and also a current amount here for the installment sale of $24,000 for the liability. So just subtracting our amounts out here, deferred tax asset at $25,000 less a deferred tax liability here at $24,000 is going to give us a deter deferred tax asset here at $1,000. Now, if the opposite was true here, if the deferred tax liability was greater than the deferred tax asset, then it would be uh, classify or uh, reported here as a, under current assets deferred tax liability here. But you can see what's going on here. Current amounts get reported as current assets here on the balance sheet. Now for our long-term liabilities here. Well, we can go back up to our chart here. We had that deferred tax liability for the depreciation expense here of 100000 Plus, we have another uh, deferred tax liability here of 126000 and those are for the non-current amount here. The depreciation was for those plants assets of non-current, uh, a non-current, um, uh, uh, non-current here for your deferred tax uh, liability in this case, and then your installment receivable. That was also non-current. Everything's greater than one year here, so that's which, how you have to determine in this case it's going to be our long-term under classified under long-term liabilities, and it's going to be for deferred tax liability in this case. And this is the case here where we had the liability of a hundred thousand here for our depreciation and our installment sales here of one hundred twenty-six thousand. So again, we're going to net those amount here, uh, add those amounts together, and we're going to get our deferred tax liability here of two hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars. And just say this was based on reporting for twelve thirty-one X one here, and we didn't get into all the calculations for deferred tax assets or deferred tax liabilities. The only thing we want to do is we wanted to look at them in comparison to classifying here. If it's a non-current amount, you have to group your non-current amounts. In this case, we had all, both liabilities for our non-current amount, but had some of them been a deferred tax asset, then they would have had to been netted out here. And then again, for the non-current amount, those were the long-term liabilities. And then for the amounts are classifying for their current amounts, that would be classified or reported under current assets here in the balance sheet. So you either have to determine your deferred tax asset or liability for your based on your current assets classifying here or and then you would be under the current assets and or the long-term liabilities here on the balance sheet for a deferred tax asset or liability here and those for would be based on the non-current amounts classifying the non-current amounts here again everything goes back to the related balance sheet account here for your temporary difference here Okay, so now we've uh, just looked at a really basic example here uh, for how we calculate. Uh, we have to take your current assets here, report them for any deferred tax asset or liabilities, or long-term liabilities for any deferred tax asset or liability. And then, just lastly here, uh, we went looked at it earlier here, but you want to we just compare it with how we've broken it out here, and you compare it to our total. So again, had we just gone up here and uh, 
added our net, just netting our total amounts here for each our assets and our liabilities, you can see there's a difference here. So for our deferred tax asset here, had you just netted, uh, added up the total amounts, it was only 25,000 in this case, it would be different here than our current assets that we're reporting of only 1,000. And for our current deferred tax liability, we had two, 250,000 here versus uh, what we actually calculated or what was confer considered here a long-term liability of 226,000. So you can see what's going on here just comparing the totals. You can't go and just add up your deferred tax assets or your deferred tax liabilities here. You have to classify them here, either non-current or current. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at, do a summary of our rules here. Okay, so this is really our balance sheet presentation, some rules summary here. So number one, if the temporary difference is caused by a current asset or a current liability, then the deferred tax asset, tax account is current. So let's say we have the current tax liability here, uh, net out a current tax asset. It, current tax asset is going to reduce any tax liability here. And then the net current amount would be what you'd be reporting here. And that would be disclose, disclosure of details in your financial, financial statements here. And what you're talking about, net current amount here, that's anything that you're classifying here as your underlying asset as less than one year. Now rule two here, if the temporary difference is caused by a non-current asset or a non-current liability, then the deferred tax account is non-current, that is greater than one year here. So what you would do is you'd take all your non-current tax liabilities here, and then you take your non-current tax assets, you net those amounts out here. Again, a non-current tax asset is going to reduce your non-current liability. Then you're going to come up with a net non-current amount that should be reported here in your on your financial statements. So, so that would be disclose. You can disclose your details on your financial statements. Okay, so those are the two rules that we have to follow by here for uh, temporary differences. Either they're non-current or they're current, and if they're current, uh, then you have to net out your current tax uh, liabilities versus your current tax assets to come up with what you would report as the net current amount here in your financial statements. And, and for non-current, the same thing here, non-current tax liabilities here versus non-current tax assets are net those amounts up to come with the net non-current amount. Again, that would be reported. So just moving down here, looking at our little T accounts, uh, just from our little basic example here, we had a deferred tax asset amount here and a deferred tax liability here. So uh, liability, that's a liability here on your balance sheet and the asset here would be an asset on the balance sheet. So in our case here, we had our example here where we had some deferred tax assets that we netted out here. Uh, for the current amount here, this would be the current assets. We debited that here for $1,000 here. And that would be report, that's a current asset related to the, at, related assets are current. That's why we we would uh, show that amount here, a deferred tax asset here, because our current asset here, a deferred tax asset here, is related to assets that are current. And then for our deferred tax liability here, we had that uh, credit that here for $226,000. So if we go on down here, our long-term liabilities, we determine those uh, deferred tax liability at $226,000. So credit that here for $226,000. Again, a liability on your balance sheet as a deferred tax here. And again, that would be related to where you have your long-term liabilities. It would be a long-term liability here, and it's related to assets that are non-current or long-term. Okay, so that'll summarize our uh, talking here on deferred taxes and how they should be reported here on a corporation's balance sheet, either as current or non-current deferred tax assets or deferred tax liabilities.